Merry Christmas and welcome to Christmas Day worship in the name of Emmanuel, God with us. The readings are introduced by verses from Martin Luther's Christmas Carol, From Heaven Above, which he based on a refrain used for a 16th century singing game. In the game, as in his carol, the song sets up a riddle to be solved. For example, who within the nativity story would have proclaimed this text? From heaven above to earth I come to bear good news to every home. Glad tidings of great joy I bring to all the world and gladly sing. These are the words of the angels rejoicing at Jesus' birth. Verses from Luther's carol precede each reading today, setting up a riddle that is answered by the biblical story. And in the end, by sending Jesus into our world, God answers the riddle of sin and our human condition. We are set free to proclaim with the angels, Glory to God in the highest heaven, who unto us a son has given. Come, let us worship. Are these angels who come to earth bearing the news of the Christ child's birth who are these shepherds who run to see and worship the babe on bended knee who is this child so small so slight of whom the angels sang that night who is this king a manger his throne who humbles himself to make us his own who is this God who sends a son into our midst the promised one the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Incarnate God, on this Christmas day, we give you thanks for sending your Son to bring light into our darkness. Grant that we, like the angels over Bethlehem, may sing your praises in our hearts and lives. Amen.
I'd like to wish you all a very blessed and happy Christmas Day. Who are these angels who come to earth? The first lesson in Luke, second chapter. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for, see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on peace, on earth peace among those whom he favors. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and who unto us the Son has given. Lesson two answers the question, who is this king? A manger, his throne? From Isaiah 9. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace. For the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Glory to God in the highest heaven, who unto us the Son has given.
The third lesson answers the question, who are these shepherds who run to see? From Luke chapter 2, beginning at verse 15. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. Glory to God in the highest heaven, who unto us the Son has given. Lesson four answers the question, who is this child, so small, so slight? Taken from Hebrews 1, beginning at the first verse. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things. Through him, he also created the world's. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Glory to God in the highest who unto us the Son has given. This is God who sends a son. The gospel from the Gospel of John, beginning with verse 1. The Word was first. 
The Word present to God, God present to the Word. The Word was God in readiness for God from day one. Everything through Him, nothing, not one thing, came into being without Him. What came into existence was life, and the life was the light to live by. The life light blazed out of the darkness. The darkness could not put it out. There once was a man, his name John, sent by God to point away the life light. Self the way to the light was the real thing. Every person entering life, he brings in. He was in the world. The world was there through him. And the world did. He came to his own people, but they didn't want him. But whoever did want him, who believed he was who he claimed and would do what he said, he made to be their true selves, their child of God selves. These are the God begotten, not blood begotten, not flesh begotten, not sex begotten. The word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. We saw the glory with our own eyes, the one of a kind glory, like father, like son, generous inside and out, true from start to finish. Glory to God in highest heaven, unto us the Son has given. Shepherds, angels, and a baby, an infant. These are the heart of the story that we heard last night, but also that we've heard today. A story from the Gospel of Luke about the coming of God into the world. It's Luke's perspective, his telling, that communicates to us how this God who was so often believed to be far off, became one of us, fragile, a tiny baby, someone who understands, who is with us. The infancy narrative, if we want to call that from the Gospel of John, is quite different. It doesn't begin with... Uh, a child in a manger in Bethlehem. It begins with the very beginning of everything. Eternal. A, a story of the word. The logos. And how everything was made through that logos. Whom we know to be Jesus. A story of the power of God. Existing through all eternity. A God who was there. Has always existed who in this word, this Christ, this Jesus, who was connected and causal, part of all things in creation. A very, very different kind of infancy narrative. Now hang on, I'm going to take you far afield from that conversation. And I'm going to talk about a movie called A Knight's Tale. The main uh, actor there is Heath Ledger, and he plays a knight. And um, he, uh, well, actually, I say he plays a knight. He really became, he was just a page that stepped in and started impersonating a knight. And he did really well, because he could fight really well, but he wasn't of noble birth. He did not belong to be a knight. 
And eventually it was found out and he was exposed as being a fraud and stuck in the stocks and humiliated and ridiculed. Now, spoiler alert, in case you haven't seen it, I don't know what to do, but I'm just, I'm going to spoil this for you. But the king sees him. And I would say the king saw his true essence and saw that even though he didn't have the lineage, didn't have the papers, didn't have the birthright, that his true essence was a knight and declared him such, and then the world recognized it. This infancy narrative we have from the Gospel of John is about the true essence. What is the true essence of God? What is the true essence of ourselves? And John very clearly says that Jesus, the Logos, is the Word of God, is the true essence. And that this, this God, this Word that existed from the beginning, instead of, you might say, coming down from heaven, emerged from all that is and took on the form of a human. And in John's eyes, he said, this was the life light coming into the world. And what does light do? It illuminates. Jesus was the one who so clearly, for all who would look, who for all who would listen, who for all who would pay attention, would recognize that Jesus was the really real, the truly true, the grace and the love incarnate of God. And so recognizing people, instead of having to guess, to wonder, to keep living out all those ways that we accumulate in the world, now had the chance to see that light and to live into that life and light. And as Eugene Peterson in his translation, he puts it this way, but whoever did want him, who believed he was, who he claimed and would do what he said, he made to be their true selves, their child of God selves. Today, this Christmas, we celebrate the incarnation of God. And especially we celebrate the revealing of what is true, what is real, what it, what it is that love looks like, the very essence of the universe, because we have a glimpse, we have a window, we have a light that illuminates the grace and love of God. The stories are quite different. They come from different perspectives, from Luke and from John, but they agree on the main thing. God has revealed, God has come to us. And this God is not one that's punitive, that's not out to get us, it's not an angry God. The truly true, the really real God is love, is grace, is forgiveness. This is the God who came to us, who comes to us and invites us to step, step into the life light to live the way Jesus lived, so that we also become light to others because of the light of God that we reflect. The truly true, the really real, has come into the world. Thanks be to God.
Joining our voices with the song of the angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of glory, you bring your word to birth among us. As you spoke through the prophets and ancestors, empower your church to proclaim your name with boldness and tenderness, that your salvation is revealed to all the ends of the earth. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. You founded the earth and the heavens are the work of your hands. Protect the beauty of mountains and valleys. Save glaciers, tundra, and arctic lands from the threat of changing climates. Sustain all things by your powerful word. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, your mercy is, is great. great. You send messengers to announce peace. Build trust among nations. Strengthen relationships that reach beyond borders. Grant safety to ambassadors, relief workers, and health care providers. Reveal your redemption through their work. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, your mercy is great. You bring hope to all people. Bring wholeness to all who long for your comfort and companionship. Revive aching spirits and restore tired bodies. Bring healing and wholeness to all who long for mercy, especially, especially for everyone who asks us to pray, including Gemma, Raymat, Dave, Yvonne, Gil and Elsie, Patrick, Lynn, Jeff, Ella, Marlene, Edie, Dirk, and Lorna, Sherry, Dave, Sheila, and Jim, Randy, Bill, and Ruth, Devona, Colin, Carter, and all those who mourn, especially the Wells family. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. You are the fullness of grace and truth. Bless ministries of generosity in this congregation and community. Open our doors and welcome extend our tables to guests, and send us out with provision for those who lack food, water, shelter, clothing, or companionship. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. For what else do the people of God pray? Gracious God, we know your Holy Spirit prays inside of us in that place that is too deep where our words have not yet formed. And so we pray that you hear us, O God. Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. Claim us as your children in this life and in the next. Encourage us by the witness of the saints across the ages who have testified to your light and your life. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. God of mercy, come quickly to us with grace upon grace as we lift these and all our prayers to you. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Also with you. Sing. 
Thank you. Thank you all for your faithfulness and generosity in your giving during this crazy COVID time. Uh, and just a reminder, there's a donate button on the website for you content to continue your faithfulness and generosity. Let us pray. Generous God, you have given us life, this community, and these gifts of, of, that we share. Move in our hearts that we might use your gifts to bring hope and blessing wherever we go. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. conclude our Christmas Day worship with the Christmas Creed, Confession, and Blessing. I believe in Jesus Christ and in the beauty of the gospel begun in Bethlehem. I believe in the one whose spirit glorified a little town and whose spirit still brings music to people all over the world in towns both large and small. I believe in the one for whom the crowded inn could find no room, and I confess that my heart still sometimes wants to exclude Christ from my life today. I believe in the one who the rulers of the earth ignored and the proud could never understand, whose life was among common people, whose welcome came from people of hungry hearts. I believe in the one who proclaimed the love of God to be invincible. I believe in the one whose cradle was a mother's arms, whose modest home in Nazareth had love only for its wealth, for its only wealth, who looked at people and helped them see what God's love saw in them, who by love brought sinners back to faith and lifted human weakness to meet the strength of God. I confess my everlasting need of God, the need of forgiveness for selfishness and greed, the need of new life for all that seems empty, the need of love for people everywhere. I believe in God who gives us the best. I believe in Jesus, living word made living flesh. God grant you the light in Christmas, which is faith, the warmth of Christmas, which is love, the radiance of Christmas, which is purity, the righteousness of Christmas, which is justice, the belief in Christmas, which is truth and the all of Christmas, which is Christ. Amen. Shepherd.
our Christmas celebration has not ended, it has just begun. To assist you in the celebration of Christmas for the next 12 days of Christmas, I uh, uh, want to let you know there's a five-minute devotion on the website, uh, it's a fresh one every day. So, Merry Christmas. Go in peace, be God's life in the world. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.